Hello everyone, Piner and Apple here with the next part in the Once and Future Saga, Episode 6, Time Lord Immemorial. Written by Lisa McMullen. Last time we had a very good showing with the Martian invasion of Planetoid 50. My favourite of the bunch. Which makes today's topic even more depressing as this is unfortunately the worst of the bunch. At least so far. But with such great characters and actors trying to make it work. This story suffers not from lack of imagination or the characters inside it, but at the centre of the plot lies an ancient Time Lord myth that little is done with, and a garbage prophecy, culminating in the characters chanting and holding hands to get out of it. It's more disappointing than rage-inducingly bad. So let's take a look at what great stuff we do get, and the middling and uninspired through the motions parts. Going through the motions. The story starts with the Ninth Doctor, played excellently like usual by Christopher Eccleston, trying to find the Union, guessing it's a planet rich in psionic sand, like Planetoid 50, but he ends up with another Doctor in his TARDIS, played by David Warner. This Doctor may be the least heard incarnation in the series, but the character is a long-standing one, originating in an alternate universe story in Big Finish's Unbound series in Sympathy for the Devil, and making his way into the main universe thanks to a friendship with Bernice Summerfield, and appeared in what is apparently his last, last story, Dark Gallifrey the War Master, thanks to the untimely passing of the actor. With that surprise, we cut to a beach on a distant world, where a positively cheerful Lumiat takes residence near an irate Livchenka, played respectively by Gina McKee and Nicola Walker. The Lumiat is a character I love, and wish was used more. With contextual clues and her titular episode in the Missy series, it's revealed that the Lumiat is between Missy and the Spymaster, an incarnation representing all the good that Missy tried to be, and the tragedy of her story is one to be experienced, so I would recommend you go check that story out. She is used well here, and I hope she gets to meet a doctor properly. Maybe now that 13 is getting audios, they can team up for a story. On the flip side we have Liv, who we've seen on the channel before in Flatpak. But this story takes place far before that story, and while I love Liv and Helen, God, she is not used well in this story. She comes across as a total grumpy bitch, which is used comedically well, but seems like a bit of an exaggeration of her usual sarcastic tone. And while she works off the other characters as a straight man quite well, although this is the first time in these Doctor Who reviews in a row I'm calling the non-straight or male character the straight man, she is literally only there to witness proceedings, and that isn't an exaggeration. Duration. After a funny reference to the silence, the water at the beach disappears, the sand bubbling up into sand creatures, as back in the TARDIS, the two doctors argue, and these two have pretty good chemistry, even with little to do between them. The unbound doctor starts experiencing degeneration, due to being in proximity with Nine, the TARDIS feeling quite the same way, flicking between consoles. San invades the TARDIS too, taking form with a strange voice filter, telling them that the literal sands of time are running out. The Lumiat calls these creatures silicons, as they seem to be made of the psionic silica, the material Nine was looking for. And they start killing and transforming beachgoers. Why? I have no idea. I don't recall the story even really having an explanation. The Lumiat and Liv team up rather easily, and Nine manages to just get a sample of the sand to follow to its source. The Silicons try to kill everyone on the beach, as the Lumiat and Liv leg it for a TARDIS, but the two are captured before they can reach it. But they're needed, I suppose, meaning they're transported and not killed. Nine and the Unbound Doctors manage to find themselves in the Hall of the Time Lord Immemorial. A legend, a singularity of dimensional and temporal engineering that keeps the time of all timelines. A clever idea, not really used to its full potential. All our characters meet up as the girls are dropped off, and we get the start of a prophecy from the Time Lord Immemorial, played by Robert Powell. He'll pop in every now and then between scenes to drop hints, but we'll get to that when it becomes important. They do introductions, quite fun while the Doctor tries to figure out who the Lumiat is, and the Unbound Doctor gets disrespected repeatedly. Nine and the Lumiat are taken by the sand, leaving Liv and the Unbound Doctor to escape the room via the TARDIS. While Nine and the Lumiat land in a room with the Time Lord Immemorial, who plays scenes from his life on the walls. Him designating the Doctor as the hero of the story, and the Master as the villain, tipping Nine off as to who the Lumiat is. And it's pretty heartbreaking as the Lumiat tries to convey the reason for her existence, and Nine refuses to listen. 
Liv and the Doctor try to leave, but the TARDIS won't move, the Hall of the Time Lord Immemorial whirling around them and changing at will. And they find the map of the multiverse, something seemingly pulling the realities into each other, creating the destruction of everything. The Time Lord Immemorial teases the Diamond Array from the next episode, and after some more good character interaction, they run from a sea of sand, ending up back with the other travellers in a hall of sand timers, showing how long each universe has left, as the multiverse degenerates just like the Doctor. The Doctor assuming it's the Union, but is very wrong, as the Union is a person, once again a hint for the next episode. The hourglasses are shattering, creating silicants who offer help, taking the crew to a quarry, telling them that some of the sand had been stolen. The material seeming to be what was used for the degeneration weapon. All three Time Lords are hit with a wave of degeneration, but are kept in the same bodies, thanks to the Hall's temporal properties. With the removal of the sand, which created the degeneration weapon, it seemingly unbalanced the sands of time, meaning it's up to these four to stabilise everything thanks to a Gallifreyan legend slash nursery rhyme. Your Time Lord Invincible. Immemorial. That just means very, very old, right? Proper old. Even for a Time Lord. No, there were stories, nursery rhymes. When all of time and all of space converges in the timeless place, the one who runs will have to race to stop the sands of time. The one who runs? Yeah. Doctor, the one who runs? What? What? Oh. A poem clearly indicating it's about the Doctor and needing a friend, foe, alternate self and a witness. Because of a meta-narrative, I guess? It's just sort of needed because that's what the story needs. There's no real solid logic drawn up as to why these roles need to be filled. And sure, we don't necessarily need everything to be explained completely, but as it is, it leaves the climax as a bunch of people standing around talking about a loosely explored legend. I think this upcoming climax could have done with a second draft. So after some deductions... A Time Lord. Their alternate self, their true nemesis, their true friend, and a witness. Only then can the sands of time be stopped. Only then can reality be saved. They realise who represents each role. The Doctor, his alternate self, the Lumiat being his greatest friend and foe, and with Liv being the witness. Which really wastes her being here, seriously. She was quite literally here to stand and watch. That's probably the worst use of a character in this series. They make their way back to the first room, realising that the only reason they ever left was for exposition's sake. Jesus. I'm really getting depressed and done with this plot. They use the hall's malleable properties to meet back up in the original room and start their chant. As they put everything together, they bring about a large amount of power, a temporal tornado is how they describe it, trying to come up with a reason each one needed to be there. But other than Nine and the Unbound Doctor, it kind of fails to justify the other's appearance. The Time Lord Immemorial's power is summoned, commanded by these four, setting everything right and bringing the sand back to where it originated. The Unbound Doctor sent back to his TARDIS after a degeneration fakeout, eager to share his adventure with Benny, a series that I should check out at some point. As the Bernie Summerfield audios that I have heard, one of her specials from way back when, and the episode of the Ninth Doctor Adventures that she featured in, were both quite good. Nine says his goodbyes as Liv leaves with the Lumiat in her Technicolor Beach Hut TARDIS, him forgetting who the Lumiat even is, after a reference to the Eighth Doctor adventures. The Lumiat and Liv's final scene is quite a good one, as they speak and an alien force attacks the beach. God, this poor beach and the people who live on this planet. Two times in one day. And the Lumiat starts to degenerate, which considering how different she is to the other masters, is utterly heartbreaking as she tries to refuse herself. The story ends with Nine remembering what the Lumiat said, making himself a device to help calm the degeneration with a little bit of sand he took from the hall but makes his way towards a distress signal sent by Susan, looking for the Union and the Diamond Array at the same spot. This looks to be about the shortest of these stories, and boy could it have done with the extra runtime. Not just for more of these great character interactions, but to flesh out the ideas of the story and to give these characters more to do, because with such great character work, I'm a little pissed off so little actually happened. A beach is attacked for no reason, 
so that the Doctor and co can be bounced about an ancient Gallifreyan mystery for a slideshow of exposition. And this isn't the first time that a Time Lord creation has been belittled into a PowerPoint presentation. But it lacks vision. And in the grand scheme of things, these characters do little more than stand in a circle and hold hands so that the multiverse doesn't end. Beyond the hand-holding and character interaction, Liv did nothing. The Unbound Doctor did little, the Lumiat did little, and the sheer gimmick of having Nine in the story was underutilised. These characters and actors work so well together, the Ninth Doctor and Lumiat actors actually being in a show before together. And in that respect, it may be one of my favourite in this set, but when it comes to looking at this story subjectively, I just can't justify calling it good with all its shortcomings. Which sucks, because with these characters, it could have been my absolute favourite. And it was on my first listen, but coming back with a critical eye, I I just can't justify this not being the lowest of the range, which saddens me greatly. And it sucks that Lisa McMullen's other story in the range, Two's Company, also suffered similar problems. The character work being excellent, but the plot not delivering its best. So, I'll give Once in Future Episode 6, Time Lord Immemorial by Lisa McMullen, a 5 out of 10. I wish it were higher, but I just can't justify it. And I hope in the future some of these characters can work together again, and that we get some better stuff from Lisa McMullen. Like the original Lumiat story, that I recall being very great, and the excellent Ninth Doctor story, Girl Deconstructed. I'd give that a listen for anyone wanting to dip their toe into the Ninth Doctor range. Thank you everybody for watching my review of the Time Lord Immemorial. Please like the video if you liked it, comment down below if you wish, and consider subscribing to the channel, and if you do, ring that notification bell so that you're told every single time that I make an upload. Once again, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next review. Bye! Toast. A little piece of toast. Because there's so much to choose from. There's brown bread, white bread, all sorts of wholemeal bread. It comes in friendly packages with writing on the side.